It's a really good question. The, you know, the definition of God, you can't put God in a genus and you can't put him in a species. And that's why uh, in, in the end, our, we can't define God and, and therefore we use negative things. So the argument about, is this called the via negativa in the Latin tradition, scholastic tradition? The Muslims call it the selvia, right? So he has sifata selvia, the attributes that negate the opposite. So wujud is a sifa nafsia, and that's why wujud, uh, al wujud ain al mawjud. And we'll get into that when we get into the categories, and I'll explain that. But it's a good question. So we don't, we don't, we, you know, we can define God in terms of, of, of our limited understanding of how God has spoken about himself. And there's also rational definitions like, I mean, that's one definition. The 20 attributes that you're learning in Aqidah is, is another way of really defining God. But if you really break it down, it's working around what is undefinable. And that's why Kuluma Khatra Bibarika, Allahu Khilaf Wadarika. Everything that occurs to the mind, God is other than that. And so we cannot, in reality, define Allah other than how He has described Himself. So we use Rasam and not Had, really, the descriptions that God has given us, that He is that he is Qa'im, that he is Al-Qayyum, uh, uh, that he is Al-Baqi, that he is Al-Ghani, that he is Al-Jabbar, that he is Malik, Al-Qudus, Al-Salam, Al-Mu'min, Al-Muhaymin. So, so the same way that there are things that, that you can grasp, right, without definition. So there are, there are ways of understanding God and grasping God, but in the end, you'll, you'll never know his essence. His essence is completely unknowable. And the only way you can know him is through his sifat. And the sifat, in the end, are, are, are the, the, our scholars don't use the term accident for God. Because when we get into the categories, you understand why. But the sifat, in relation to that, that are like the, walillah al-mathil al-ala. They're like the accidents in relation to the, to the essence a good again we get back to what you know what was just uh, talked about that when you say the concept of God in reality we don't have a concept of God we don't have a tasawwur what we have is uh, a, a type of understanding right there's a type of ma'rifa that we have and, and that ma'rifa has degrees at the most basic level it's iman which is tasdiq so we know that, that God is wajib al wujud. And, and wajib is a concept, wujud is a concept. And that's why we know God analogically. Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Laysa kamithrihi shay, wa huwa samia al basir. There is nothing like God. So don't, any tasawwur you have, God is other than that. And then it says, and that wow is called isti'naf, and yet, and yet, he hears and he sees. So how do we know hearing and seeing? We know hearing and seeing because we have hearing and seeing. In your own selves, don't you see? So we can conceptualize hearing and seeing, but when we relate that hearing and seeing to God, we have to get rid of any conceptualization that it's like our hearing and seeing. So there's no tashbih in reality, but you, know, you have tanziyah and tashbih. But you need tashbih to approximate. This is called taqrib al-ma'ani, to approximate the meanings, all right? So if somebody says, I don't believe in God, first, you, you need to define what they don't believe in. So you can say, I don't believe in this God that came down and died for our sins. You can say, well, I don't believe in that God either. So we're both atheists of that God, Right? And then we can discuss other understandings, right? But in the end, uh, we, you know, Allahumma la nuhsiya thana alayka anta kama thanita ala nafsika. We can't ever say what you are. We, but we can only say what you said about yourself. Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Allahu samad. Lam yadid wa lam yudad wa lam yikru kufan ahad. 
Our scholars say that negates the eight ways that people fall into shirk. So those are all negative approaches to God. They negate concepts of God. قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ That negates the concept that God is plural or that He's composite. Right? One is not a number. And this is one of Euclid's, in, in book, one of his books, I think it's book seven. He, he says that, that a unit is that thing which we call one. That's a unit. That's a wahda. And then he said number is a multitude of units. So one is not a number. Every number is a multiple of one, but one is not a number. So when we talk about God, we're saying that he is one, and that's negating kathra and ta'addud. It negates the idea that he's composite, that he's, he's made up of parts. So he's a simple reality. Simple, I mean by that there's no parts. It's infinite simplicity. There's, it's pure oneness. And then Allahu Samad, that negates uh, the haja, ihtiyaj, naqs. It negates deficiency and aib. So it negates, we can't conceive of God as needing anything or having any blemishes. He's salam, he's perfect. Salimun min al And then, lam yirid wa lam yulad, that negates illa wal ma'luliyah. It negates cause and effect. Nothing caused God, and God is not the cause of anything in a cause and effect relationship. In other words, that cause and effect cannot be separated, right? So we can't, one of the things Aristotle, his problem with God, he called him the prime mover, because he said that God is the uncaused cause of all existence. So we say that God is the cause of existence, but we say it majazan. We, we say it to say that he's not, not a cause. Do you see? I mean, these are, these are we're getting into advanced kalam, and it's, you know, it, you really need a lot of uh, preparation to get into, <laughs> into these concepts. But um, God says, be and it is. That fa is not sababiyah. If it was sababiyah, it would be majzum. He says, kun fayakunu, be, and it is. So there's no, there's no, God is, is not interacting in his creation in a cause and effectual way, in that way, that things are interacting with other things in a cause and effect way. And then, walam yakullahu kufuan ahad, yanfi al-shabah wal nadir. You know, that he could have shabihun or nadir, that he has a likeness or an opposite. So the devil, in, you know, if you get into uh, Ahura Mazda, Ahriman and Ahura Mazda in du- dual, dualistic thinking, the devil is seen as a, a, a nadir of God. You know, that there's a dark God and a light God. That's a dualistic Manichaean thinking. That's negated by that. Uh, so the Qurhu Allahu Ahad is the, the via negativa of our tradition. It is the, it, yaslibu, al, uh, you know, anwa al-kufr al-thamaniya. It negates those eight types of kufr. And that's why whoever really understands ikhlas understands tawheed, at least at, in that, at that level. Does that help? Yeah. It's-